Every day, anesthesia providers use inhalational agents to keep patients unconscious in the operating room. But how many of you are aware that these agents are considered greenhouse gases and can be harmful to the environment? In fact, sevoflurane, isoflurane, desflurane, and nitrous oxide are all greenhouse gases. When a patient breathes in an inhaled anesthetic, less than 5% of it is metabolized in the body. So what goes in mostly comes out. And after the anesthesia machine collects exhaled gas, it's ultimately pumped out of the building into the atmosphere, just like the exhaust of a car. Researchers who specialize in the atmospheric chemistry of these gases have determined how long each one survives in the atmosphere. Sevoflurane has the shortest atmospheric lifetime of 1.1 years, while nitrous oxide, on the other hand, has the longest at 114 years. The amount of heat that each gas can trap relative to an equal amount of carbon dioxide is also measured and referred to as its global warming potential. This allows scientists to compare the global warming impacts of each gas. This measurement typically is made over a 100-year period. As you can see here, all inhaled agents can trap heat on orders of magnitude hundreds to thousands of times higher than that of an equal mass of CO2. Sevoflurane has a global warming potential 130 times that of an equal amount of CO2, while desflurane has a GWP 2,540 times greater. Let's put this another way. Running desflurane for one hour at 6.7% at one liter per minute has the same environmental impact as driving 198 miles, while running sevoflurane for one hour at 2.2% at one liter per minute is equivalent to driving four miles. Big difference, right? So how do we try to lower the negative impact of anesthetic gases on the environment? Let's look specifically at one area of concern, the practice of pediatric intubation. Mask induction is very common in the pediatric population, which includes the use of both high flow rates and anesthetic concentrations. It has been observed that many anesthetic providers commonly set the circuit and mask off to the side while turning the vaporizer off prior to intubating the patient. Unfortunately, this practice leaves flows running. That means inhaled anesthetic is washed into the operating room, creating additional contamination while at the same time decreasing the amount of anesthetic left in the circuit. Since anesthetic gas is not visible, dry ice vapor is used as a substitute to visualize what happens. In scenario A, the anesthesia provider gets ready for pediatric intubation by turning the vaporizer off. As you can see, anesthetic gas rapidly exits the mask and enters the room. In scenario B, the anesthesia provider turns off flows prior to intubation. Now less anesthetic can be seen leaving the circuit when compared to turning off the vaporizer. Here are the representations side by side. An important note to remember, just as you would have to turn the vaporizer on after intubation, you would have to turn flows back on as well. Of course, dry ice vapor is not the same as volatile anesthetic gas, but these scenarios are used to visualize what's happening every day when you provide anesthesia. Knowing what you know now, are you willing to make efforts to change your practice and turn off the fresh flows rather than the vaporizer when intubating a pediatric patient? If you choose to do so, you would be limiting not only operating room contamination, but also the amount of greenhouse gas released into the environment every day.